My name is Connie Sufo, and I chose a song titled Battle Hymn of the Republic, and it was written by Julia Ward Howe, and it goes like this. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. I have read a fiery gospel writ in burnished rows of steel. As ye deal with my contemners, so with you my grace shall deal. Let the hero born of woman crush the serpent with his heel, since God is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. O oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea, with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free, while God is marching on. I believe that Miss Howe successfully utilized external rhyme with the repetition of sound to create an expectation of coming rhyme, which creates a sense of anticipation to hear the next ending. Being a spiritual hymn, the anticipation, in my opinion, is like wanting to know an answer and awaiting direction, much like prayer. I found the same example, I found some examples of imagery in the lines, such as the first stanza, he, she alludes to the glory of the coming of the Lord, such as, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, like, she's actually seen how beautiful and vibrant and colorful and intense the Lord coming towards her would be and how he is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. And that gives a sense of trampling where his feet are actually uh, pounding on the ground where the grapes would be stored, where, where he's just mashing things out because of this vengeance. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword, which in my mind kind of makes me think of like a, like a Percy Jackson kind of effect of lightning bolts coming from a sword it's very very visual the way that it forms these pictures i have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps where you suddenly picture armies at war and how at night they pitch their campfires to to have a guard in case there's an attack in the night and so you picture all of these little mini bonfires at war grounds and then they have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps and you get the sense of how committed the people are to this cause and to serving him because even at night in the midst of this war they're building an altar I can read his righteous sentence in the dim and flaring lamps that that you could see that he's still choosing the right thing by lamplight it's just it's very it creates a very strong sense of battle for sure and yet it still ties it to to the spiritual aspect and and the um the way that there's this spiritual warfare and there's these devo devout followers and and it makes a way to imagine this blending of spirituality and yet reality and war this poem uses figurative language the line with glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me, we see an example of this figurative language. I believe that the line is speaking to how with glory in his bosom, it, it's not meaning literally that in his chest there's a light. It's very much speaking to a sense of who he is gives us the gift of transfiguring us from what we are as mortals to an eternal concept. And you can see that sense of figurative language in that line, specifically. Um, it, I was very excited when we were originally assigned this part of the book of what selections we could make to, to dissect and tear apart, because this has been one of my favorite.
favorite hymns with its um, marching beat and 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 again, like I said, the way that it you can picture the blending of spirituality and actual battle. It's one of my favorites from childhood growing up, and it was really fun to pick it apart in this kind of way and even use a sense of why I like it to complete the assignment. So this was fun. Thanks.